For those of you who are taking thesis seminar, I wanted to present a very brief recap for week 12. Week 12, we're going to begin thinking about our results and discussion section. And as we're returning back from our break, hopefully you've had a chance to begin analyzing your information. This is a very important step before we get into writing the results and discussion section. And one of the first things that we'll be talking about in our tutoring sessions this week is basically asking what of all the data that you collected, what are you planning to include? What information are you planning to exclude? So don't feel like you need to, or even should, include all of the data that you've collected. You need to be very selective in determining what you found interesting, surprising, maybe e either anticipated or, or unanticipated, something that you did not expect and uh, those are oftentimes things to think about whenever you're making this decision about what to include and what to exclude. Take the information from your coding of qualitative information, any figures or tables that you've either created uh, as part of your analysis or even possibly figures that you might later want to include in your results and discussion section. The next question we need to think about is how do you want to organize the information? Once you've determined what to include and what to exclude, then we need to figure out what's the best way to organize our information. Remember, we're, we're going to have one section called the results and discussion. And within that one section, we're going to have subsections. And I would recommend anywhere from two to four key subsections where you present your results and discussion. So remember that the results and discussion heading should be a level one heading according to APA and your two to four key sections that you choose, they may, uh, they should be in fact a level two heading according to APA. Now one approach to organizing your sections can be to think of it in terms of your research questions and organize your subsections based on on your questions, your research questions that you are focusing on, but it does not have to be that way. It can be basically any other criteria that you find useful. The main thing is that you're organizing your ideas in a way that is easily, easily understood. And of course, uh, organizing your ideas in a way that you can express yourself clearly. So some things to think about uh, when you're writing your results and discussion. First of all, you need to distinguish between what are your results and what is a discussion of those results. So the results come directly from the data that you collected. Think of any direct quotes from your interviews, from your recorded interviews, any, any direct quotes from focus groups, stimulated recalls, classroom observations that were recorded, even the written word, but we're looking for direct quotes. This is going to be in contrast to what, what, we've, uh, what we worked on in our literature review, where we're paraphrasing what other experts are saying from the literature. Now, in our own research, we want to capture a lot of good direct quotes, word for word, what teachers or students or parents or administrators said in our data collection process. So the results are from are taken from the data. A discussion is your interpretation of the data. Think of the question, what does it mean? What does it mean when you're collecting data, when the teacher is saying certain things, the students are saying or doing certain things? What are the implications of what you're finding from your results? When organizing your results and discussion section, Make sure that you present your results before presenting your discussion. Offer key comparisons between your results and or your discussion with that of the literature. It's fine to not agree with everything that a researcher says or an expert in the field as long as you can back it up. That is, you have uh, the ability to form a sound argument for or against someone else's point of view. Now, here are some suggestions about how you can go about organizing your results and discussion section. And I 
In most cases, you're probably going to uh, combine these, these two different approaches. So your first option is to write a body paragraph, create a topic sentence for that paragraph, present your related results, and a discussion in this order. In other words, topic sentence, followed by the results, followed by a discussion, and then conclude with either a linking and summarizing sentence. So in this example with option number one, we're including both the results and the discussion within the same paragraph. Option two, in one paragraph, you again create a topic sentence followed by related results and conclude with a linking and summarizing sentence. In the following paragraph, create a topic sentence and only a discussion that relates to the results presented in the prior paragraph. So in this case, in option two, you're working in two different body paragraphs, one presenting the results, a second presenting the discussion of those results. And in both cases, you are beginning with a topic sentence and you're concluding with either a linking sentence or a summarizing sentence. But one thing to keep in mind, regardless if you're choosing option one and or option two, your discussion should relate not only to trying to link the the results to the topic sentences, but it can also link back to anything else that you've already mentioned. So imagine you're working on a third or fourth, fifth paragraph within your results and discussion section. You've already mentioned some other items from uh, other results. So you can link it back to anything that you've already presented, not just the topic sentence within that one paragraph or prior paragraph. This is thing, these are things we can clarify if this is not immediately clear once you get into writing your results and discussion section. So again, option one, option two, in most cases, you're gonna combine these two options, all right? And probably in most cases, it, it just depends on the topic sentence you're creating, the evidence, what's the easiest way for you to present your results in a way that can be understood. And again, in most cases, it's gonna be some kind of uh, combination between option one, option two. Now you'll notice I mentioned a topic sentence. I've, I've mentioned linking sentences, summarizing sentences, results, and a discussion. This should sound familiar when you're developing your body paragraphs and your results and discussion section. You're still going to follow the meal plan, but it's going to have a slight variation. And that variation is that the the results are going to function as the evidence. Okay, so evidence sentences and our literature review is the same as the results in our body paragraphs. And the analysis sentences are going to be the same as your discussion. In fact, that is what you're doing when you're discussing the results. You are analyzing it. You are synthesizing information. You're commenting on the information. You're interpreting the information. And again, the results, or I'm sorry, the discussion is really the, the highlight of the entire paper. This is where everything now comes together in terms of your ability to demonstrate your understanding, your knowledge and understanding of what it is that you found and collected and how it links back to the literature. So again, make sure that the results and discussion section, you have a good balance between results and discussion. Make sure that you're following either option one and option two. Be very clear and organized in the way that you present your information. We still need to de develop paragraphs typically between five to eight sentences, typically between 120 to 150 words, more or less. Okay, those are rough estimates. We, we don't want uh, really long paragraphs, nor do we want two or three sentence paragraphs. Typically, we want to develop ideas, topic sentences, in our results and discussion section in a way that is relevant and aligns nicely with the thesis statement. So this is what we're going to be focusing on for the next three weeks. Our deadline for compl completing the results and discussion section is 
April, I'm sorry, May 17th. That will give us one more week to complete the final draft due May 24th. So uh, I hope this helps. Let me know if you need uh, any clarification. Of course, we'll be talking about it in our tutoring sessions, but if you need uh, some assistance, make sure you're reaching out to me uh, throughout the week.